Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be doing a bit of a fish room update and a kind of an update about what's going to happen tomorrow. So without any further ado, let's get into it. We'll start here with the big six foot tank and this is the biggest tank we have in the fish room at the moment. We've got two other six foots on the actual breeding rack but they're not as tall and nowhere near as wide as this particular tank here. This tank I've had for many years, I think it holds around six or seven hundred litres. It's quite a large aquarium. It hasn't quite reached that stage where it actually looks okay. It still looks a bit like I've just escaped it. Um, and it is growing. You can see there's a ton of these little pups um, of the Valisneria kind of popping up all over the place, which is a great sign. It seems like some of the bigger plants have hit the root tabs and have started um, growing up right to the surface here and growing all the way along. But I'm kind of waiting to the point where every plant in here has reached the surface or at least the majority of it, and then I'll look at its prime, I think, it, um, when that happens. Um, the rocks I went with were moon rocks. I made a video on this particular aquarium, if you guys wanna go watch that. A heap of people really enjoyed that video and are probably wondering what's happened with it, so I thought I'd update you guys with what's going on. There's no fish in here at the moment, I'm just purely letting the plants grow out, and I'm just literally letting this tank do its thing. I hardly ever do a water change. I don't even scrub the front glass, as you can see. I've cleaned the canister filter on this tank. I also made a video on that if you guys want to check it out. We do have plans to put fish in here, just not yet. I'll probably be adding fish when it's, you know, hit its prime. The next tank we're going to move on to is this aquarium. This tank here is one of our Bosmani breeding projects. Now in here are about, probably somewhere between 50 and 100 fry. There is a huge yield. I actually made a video on how to breed these guys. They're so easy. The fry, they are so small. The smallest fry. And I'm currently feeding them bug buffet. It's a fantastic fry food. Like, literally all I do is just crunch the food up into a milk. Basically nothing much happening in here. There's just a whole bunch of Bosmani fry. So next along the line, we'll stick to the bench, is this little jar. Now I haven't actually published the video um, on this jar yet, but there is a video coming out on this. I won't share too much on it because I kind of want to keep it for the video, but it's an ecosystem in a jar with a ton of moss, maybe some shrimp, and it looks freaking awesome. It's going fantastic. And uh, yeah, that's all we're gonna say on that. And now let's move over to the breeding rack. This side of the room is just kind of display stuff. This side of the room is purely for breeding. Now, I'm actually not too sure how many tanks I've got in here. I've never actually sat down and counted. I have no idea why. I've actually asked myself this before. So let's do it right now. One, two, three, four. There's 23 tanks on this rack. So quite a few tanks. And these four tanks here, are not that interesting so we're not really going to get into them too much and these are solely just for raising baby fish so growing out fish to sell to shops or to hopefully in the future maybe you guys on an online um, on a website that's besides the point so these are for raising fish and in this top tank there is some stock really nothing in here just a, some big mystery snails from a video I made breeding mystery snails you guys can check that out if you want and we have four Aussie icons in here. So we've got some um, gudgeons, fire tails, and um, there might be Western carp gudgeon in here as well, I'm not too sure. In this tank, we have a huge school of Bose Money rainbow fish. So these were the ones we bred. They're looking great, they're super healthy. Got a couple of mystery snails in here to eat up the uneaten food. And we've got um, an albino bristlenose cruising around. You often see her sometimes, but... Um, yeah, so not a huge amount happening in here. The reason I put them in here is because I'm going to grow them out real big um, and just see how big I can get them in a large tank until we start, I guess, needing to actually fill these tanks up for something else. This whole system's run on a four foot sump and it runs through a bit of a process. So we've got sponges in here. Literally all I've chucked in this first compartment is just old sponge filters that I don't use. So there's a bunch of them in there runs through another sponge, then through a whole bunch of crushed corals, some like kind of matte and filter sort of things, and then back up through the pump. So these are all done by a sump. Now down below here, we'll have a look at some of these little tanks down here. 
unlike a few tanks in the fish room at the moment, there is actually some fish in here. And in this first tank here, we've got some interesting sword tails. So a lot of the sword tails are kept in the past are like, you know, just ones you buy at the normal shops and they're not really that interesting. But these ones are a solid black sword tail. Now, there is somehow there actually is a baby platy in there and an orange sword tail. I know how the orange sword tail got in there, but I have no idea how the platy got in there. Um, it still baffles me, but kind of forget them. They're not really that interesting, but we do have a pair of black sword tails. I really want to breed these guys and really continue their line. They look super awesome. They're like, I kind of want to call them like a black knight sword tail. I haven't seen them before. A heap of people are going to be like, oh, they're this, this, and this, whatever. Cool. I've personally never seen them, so I think they're cool. They kind of got an orange fin, and I want to try and get that orange bred into the top fin as much as I can and keep the solid black on the body. That's the idea with them. They haven't produced any babies yet. I've completely no idea why. I would have thought they would have bred by now, but she just doesn't seem to get pregnant. So that's the story with that tank. This tank here is a little different and I'm super duper excited about this tank. So in here, we've got seven or eight good eards. I believe they're eyes and I, I can't remember the scientific names. They're a, uh, another live bearing species, but not only are they live bearers, but they give birth with umbilical cords. So it's a very fascinating species um, to breed. They're not ready to breed yet. Um, Adrian from Adrian's Fish Room actually gave me these and oh, so thankful to him. I haven't seen these before, so I'm really keen to breed them. Yeah, so we're growing them out in here, feeding them up on Bug Buffet, getting them all primed up and ready for breeding, growing them out. I'm hoping I have males and females. I've got a mystery snail in there, and some other snails I've snuck in. We've got crushed coral in every tank in this room because I'm using rainwater or like dam water to do water changes, so it's quite soft and can often crash, so the crushed coral really helps with that. I've got, a pot, I've got a lot of potted plants in most of my tanks as well. Um, so we've got some plants in here and the good eards. Now the next tank over, we have absolutely nothing. No, oh, actually no we do. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> Take that back. This tank, we have more baby Burzmani rainbow fish. Now these are like smaller than I can even see. But there is, oh yeah, I can see one. Two. There's a few of them in there. I'm not sure how many are going to come out of this mop. Um, it's been in that tank for like so long, like a month. But there is a few hatching out. Oh, I can see like five now. Oh yeah, there's a few in there. All right, so I don't know what I'm saying. In this tank, we've got more Bose Money Rainbow Fish Fry, but these are quite big. Um, I think these are around three, four weeks old now. They're still quite small, but they're, they're well big enough to eat baby brine shrimp um, and any food you chuck in there and they're pretty much past the point where like, you know, the runts will die off sort of thing if they're not fed or whatever. They're basically up to the point where like, they'll be quite strong now. It's unlikely that I'm even gonna lose any. Um, so I think there's around 30 in here. I'm growing them out. And then the next tank over is just a sump. I've already talked about that. Now we can go on to the next part of the rack. These two super big tanks down on the bottom here are actually still being built. And what I mean by that is, I'm actually, all throughout this fish room, I have these same size tanks. They're about three foot by like one and a half foot deep. I figured that if, rather than just getting a bunch of small tanks, I just buy these big giant tanks that are just crappy and like worth like $20 and just divide them. And then I have like a bunch of tanks. So these tanks haven't been divided yet. I ran out of scrap glass. <clears throat> and glass is a lot harder than I thought it was to cut, so especially the super thick 12 mil glass. But we do have to divide these tanks. Now, these tanks are gonna be the only ones in the room that are divided three times or twice, but they'll have three tanks in them. So they're divided twice and they're gonna have three tanks rather than, you know, say the tanks above me here, they're only divided once and they've got two tanks. No fish in them, so we'll just move on. On this level, there is actually quite a lot of interesting stuff going on. So in this first tank here, we have our big colony of pineapple sword tails. I've had these since the start of this whole fish room and they've bred up 
like crazy in here. This is just like a colony breeding project. I've got like a kind of a cool slate background going on. A bunch of hollowed out coconut shells that I've drilled and some floating plants, nothing too crazy. Um, but pineapple sword tails are probably one of my favorite sword tails apart from the black ones um, over on the corner there. There's a tiny little pygmy cori in here. I've got no idea how I got in here as well. Honestly, stuff must just move around in nets. That's my only explanation. But he's in there. <clears throat> I don't even own pygmy quarries anymore. So he's just been floating around with this crew. They're breeding up. I often see babies in here. I'm not sure if they survive because I think this has kind of reached like maximum capacity now where like there's no places where they can hide where there's not a fish cruising around. So we've got some crystal shrimp in here. They're breeding up in here as well. These I caught from my local creek and they're looking pretty cool. They kind of got like a green tinge to them. Um, but yeah, that tank is got mystery snails, glass shrimp, pygmy quarries and pineapple sword tails. Now, if we move over to this tank, this is a little project of mine that I'm actually currently working on right now. And I'm more or less waiting for these guys to get pregnant. So in here we've got mollies. So in this tank, we've got platinum mollies and we've got one orange male molly in here as well, just to kind of mix things up, see what kind of babies we'll get out of them. But we're kind of just waiting for the females to get pregnant so that we can continue on with our video. And the method for breeding these guys in the latest video that we're making is going to be with these fry breeder boxes. And I've made a video on mollies before. A huge amount of people really enjoyed um, the project. So we're doing it again with some different varieties. And uh, yeah, I'm really keen to see how it goes. We're gonna be using that breeder box. And we've got some potted valacinaria in here, more floating plants, a bit of moss up the back and a bunch more crushed coral. But that's about it for that tank. This tank here, well, both of these tanks have this kind of crazy half terrarium, half aquarium scape in it. Now, I can't, I kind of just did this on a creative streak that I had the other day and it's looking amazing. So the water level is dropping um, just from pure evaporation, but I've got to fill these tanks up quite often because I've kept the sponge filters on super high and the reason why is because as the bubbles from the sponge filters pop, it kind of waters all of my moss and all of my terrestrial plants that I've got in here. So these two tanks, I kind of wanted it to be like when someone opens the door, they just are greeted with this nice fresh atmosphere and um, yeah, so we've got a lot of moss. We've got this type of plant here, I'm not too sure ex of exactly what it is. Um, but we collected it from the creek. We've got pothos, we've got spider plant, spider grass, um, a huge different, we've got a couple of different types of mosses in here. It's just not, it's not just one type of moss. And then as you move down into the tanks, there actually isn't any fish in here at the moment. Now, the plans for these tanks are gonna be pleco breeding colonies that I just leave in there. And they're more of something that breeds whenever they want to. And I kind of just forget about the tanks. It's a bit of a pain being right here because people walk past them all the time so they could get spooked. That's the only thing that I've thought about um, with being an issue for breeding these plecos, but I'm thinking about peppermint bristle noses and maybe some type of bell number, 201s, 397s in this tank. Just, they've got a couple of pleco caves, might have to change it up a bit, but I'm more like enjoying the terrestrial side of this scape. Now let's move up to the top and last level of the fish room. So in this tank up here, We've got one of my like most exciting projects that I've ever made, I think. I think it's really cool. And what I've done is I've kind of made like a Jurassic scape. So I've got a crocodile skull in here that I got from the US trip, which probably means it's an alligator skull. It's not real, it's just like a mold. Looks pretty real though. And what we've got going on this aquarium is realistically stupidly simple, but it looks, it looks sick. So I've put a layer of gravel on the bottom and I'll put some big rocks that already had moss stuck on them from around the farm here in the tank and kind of built it up into like a mountain that actually comes out at the top over there. I've kept the water level only 50% full so that we've got like the two realms, the terrestrial and like the inner aquarium realm. And then I literally went around the farm like in rainy season and found a bunch of this carpeting moss and just ripped up like huge squares of it 
laid it on the floor, like in under the skull, on top of the skull, just everywhere. Literally just covered the entire tank with moss everywhere that it could grow. Put a tiny sponge filter in the back there so I didn't have a great big one because it's really only a small uh, water volume. And I just left it. And kind of in my head, I had two expectations of this tank. Number one, I thought that it would absolutely all just completely die and it would just be, it would just all die and that would be the end of it. The next expectation that I had would be that it would just get covered in algae and you wouldn't be able to see anything. But it's done neither. It's flourished, it's produced all of these new little, I guess, leaves and the moss is going crazy in here. There is zero algae. Ooh, I just banged the metal. <laughs> I li it literally couldn't have been a better outcome if I tried. So just leaving it worked perfectly fine. I've got a floodlight up there and it just it's on all day and I have no algae. Now I'm actually planning on putting the goodyids in here because they eat hair algae. So they should also, if an algae problem does ever come up, they will um, get rid of all the algae and sort that out for me. Plus they're probably going to breed as the moss decides to really grow up. So I've got a video about this coming out as well. I'm not too sure when it's going to come out, but there is a video coming out on this. I believe that this is like <laughs> revolutionary. It's the coolest tank. Definitely by far my favorite. And I'm really excited to see uh, what happens with this tank in the future. The next tank is currently cycling. There is absolutely nothing in here at the moment. I've got some wood that's soaking, more crushed coral, and I'm sort of just cycling this aquarium. And the next two tanks actually haven't been finished yet either. They're still in the building stage. So as you can see, I ran out of silicon on my last seal up. So I've got the divider in there. It's sealed on one side, but I just need to come around with some more silicon when I get some and seal the other side. But that is absolutely it for the fish room. There's no more tanks that I can show you guys. So that's, that's it for the update. I've got one more update for you guys. And that's, I'm actually going away for three weeks and I thought I'd show you how to prepare your fish room for going away. I don't have that many fish in here and there's not really too many babies, I guess. It's quite simple. So all of the tanks in the fish room will get a water change done before I go away. Because I'm only going away for like two and a half, three weeks, that's still fine. I usually do a water change every week, but you know, two weeks, three weeks, it should absolutely be fine. It shouldn't be any issues. So I'm gonna do a big water change before I leave and a big one when I get back. Then just before I leave, I'm gonna to explain to the carer what to do while I'm away. There won't be any water changes needing to be done. It'll just be feeding. Now, it's quite tricky to explain feeding to someone who hasn't done it before. Luckily, the person who's doing it has actually done it before, but still doesn't know with this particular fish room, they haven't actually been in here and fed them. It's just been in the past when I've had fish tanks. So it's really easy, you know, it's gonna come down, read the piece of paper, it'll say, put two or three pellets of bug buffet in the tank, no more, no less. So all they have to do is come down with the bug buffet, which is just sitting on the rack over there, and grab a couple, you know, three pellets out, crunch it on the surface, go to the next tank, have a look, it'll say same thing because it's the goodyards in there, crunch three pellets in there. That's those two tanks done. There's only, the only fish in this system that need feeding is these two here. And I'll probably say like crunch, you know, a small pinch in each tank, done. So it's really simple, you just gotta read the piece of paper. And then for the fry, I'll just say grab literally one pellet or two pellets in the morning and just kind of crunch them up under the water in each of the fry tanks. Don't do any more, don't do any less. It'd be better that they actually underfed them so that the tanks don't get too polluted because they're not doing water changes. And then just same for the mollies, you know, a couple. And all I have to do is just write it on a piece of paper and that's the whole fish room sorted for three weeks. So you just need to find someone who can feed your fish, essentially, if you're not going away for too long. So I just thought I'd kind of share with you guys what's going on in the fish room at the moment, how I prepare for going away, the types of things that I like to do. And uh, yeah, anyway guys, I really hope you enjoyed this little video, this little update. There's a lot of things coming. It's gonna be in a very exciting um, few months ahead. And um, yeah, 
Don't forget to like and subscribe and stay updated for the videos that are to come. Thanks for watching.